Thanks so much. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here and two people that I deeply, deeply admire to share the panel with. Um, you all know Steve Blank, to uh, immediately in the center. Uh, Steve is a world-famous entrepreneur, uh, educator, teacher, and really has been developing a lot of concepts that I think are highly practical for people who would like to do corporate innovation and, and do new things. And Brian Murray is the CEO of HarperCollins. So if I were to describe to you, you know, an industry that was quiet, where nothing much has changed in the last 50 years, where yesterday's success is predicted tomorrow's, it wouldn't be book publishing. <laughs> and I think Brian's going to share with us some of his uh, insights on how to transform an organization, which is a very traditional one. And he shared with me before that uh, they're about to ex enjoy their 200th anniversary this coming year. So that's pretty, pretty amazing. So we've got the startup guy and the sort of traditional company guy and an academic uh, here at, at the panel. I thought just in line of this notion of transient advantage, temporary advantage, some, some data might be kind of interesting. So lots of companies talk about how much they want to innovate and how important innovation is. And if you go to a CEO and hold a microphone up to them and say, do you consider innovation to be a really critical thing? They all say, yes, 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 absolutely. And yet the data suggests that despite their interest, that their action is not necessarily going to be delivering much of the results. Um, the Deloitte Center for the Edge, for example, reports that a year-on-year -year decline in return on investment has been underway for 47 years. Uh, the topple rate, where companies that were once on top fall off that position, uh, has been vastly um, increasing. It's um, increased by 39% since 1965. Uh, we've got the whole phenomena of share buybacks and returns to shareholders and executives rather than companies making genuine resource commitments to innovation. It's becoming an increasingly hot, hot topic. Um, and finally, the tenure of companies on the um, S&P 500 has declined from 61 years in 1958 uh, to 18 years in 2012, which was the last year that study was done. So, you know, over all these sort of data and studies, what you see is this pattern where companies are talking about innovation, but they really struggle to get it right, and you see it in declining performance. When they lose their competitive advantage, they, um, they, they find they can't replenish it. They find they can't keep a pipeline of new advantages going. Now, despite that, they all want to look good, right? So, as Steve and I have been discussing, you know, you've got this just boat load of people taking study tours to Silicon Valley and setting up innovation outposts and, you know, having boot camps and, you know, thousands of post-it notes die when we have innovation idea exchanges and all that stuff. Um, so I thought, Steve, I'd ask you to open up with what, what, why do you, what do you call innovation theater? How do you recognize it? And why do you think companies engage in it? 